The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF. I'm Kelvin Hepner for Real Agriculture, and uh, we're pleased to be joined by Laura Schmidt, Production Specialist with Manitoba Pulse and Soybean Growers. We're at Crop Diagnostic School at Carmen, Manitoba. And Laura, we're coming into flowering time for uh, for peas. What should we be looking for right now when it comes to insect pests? Sure. So I'm at Entomology today. I'm an honorary entomologist. It's very, very generous of them to call me that. Um, so for flowering in peas, the insect pest we're really wanting to watch for is pea aphids. So so pea aphids, we're scouting at about 50% to 75% flowering, so that is that R2 stage. The, the stage that we're really trying to protect is the pod formation and elongation stages. So that is generally about flat pod when we have those baby pods first forming. Um, they're the most sensitive to aphid feeding. So what we're doing, um, we're going into our pea crops around flowering. Uh, you can sweep net for them. So if your pea plant population is high enough, those peas have knitted together and sweeping will be quite difficult. You're welcome to try. Uh, the other method that we do is we check the top eight inches of those pea plants and we're unfolding the uppermost closed stipules so those pea aphids are hanging out on top because that's where all the the phloem the sap that they're they're drinking and eating is going to that new growth so they're concentrated there that's where we're looking for them um, and we're trying to get a really good representation of the field so you do want to check your field edges but you also want to check your centers get a good average you also don't want to forget to include those zeros in your average so you're not spraying prematurely um, with those pea aphids we also want to keep track of some of those beneficial predators so we have lady beetles in their larvae green lace wings uh, there's aphid parasitoids and a lot of others that we have some resources for you that you can look into all those um, and we do want to monitor for those too. We want to make at least two field visits, first to evaluate that population and then to see if it's increasing or are those beneficial predators managing that population. Uh, with P aphids, the threshold for control, it was evaluated in the 80s using an older P variety. So the idea is that our newer P varieties can tolerate more feeding damage, but that threshold was also calculated using a $5.70 per bushel cell price. So that's obviously quite different now. So it kind of comes out in the wash. We have peas that can hopefully tolerate more feeding damage, but they're also more valuable. So the threshold we go with is an on average two aphids per plant tip, which is equivalent to 10 per sweep. And with that, that's about 5% yield loss based on those thresholds. Um, if we are hitting those thresholds, we're really looking at that flat pod R3 stage where we're looking to control those aphids. We had a, a late planting scenario in what in yeah. this part of Western Canada this year. How does that impact the interaction between the aphids and the peas? So one of the cultural management tools we use to minimize aphid effect on peas is planting earlier. The whole idea being that pea crop is flowering and potting earlier in the year before peak aphid development. Since we have some of those pea crops that have been planted later, there's a good chance they're going to be potting right when those aphid populations are peaking. So the other side of that is we do want to monitor those uh, peas, see what those aphid levels are like. But on the flip side, those late planted seeds, uh, pea seeds have already kind of lost their yield potential. You really need to weigh that decision. Do you want to add more inputs to this already late crop?